Harman, Lovell, and Anders will fly the most powerful rocket ever, the Saturn V. At 363 feet, it's the size of a 35-story office building and carries a million gallons of rocket fuel. It's been flown only twice, and never with men sitting on top. But no other rocket can launch a manned spaceship beyond the bounds of Earth orbit. The night before the launch, Saturn V was out there with floodlights on it, and somebody had the bad taste of telling it was like a two kiloton nuclear explosion if it blew up, so we just hoped it wouldn't blow up. This is Apollo Saturn launch control at two hours, 20 minutes and counting. Countdown still going very satisfactory at this time. We expect that astronauts Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders will be coming out in a matter of a few minutes. We appear to have a beautiful morning here for a flight to the moon, and we're also synchronizing the clocks in the spacecraft with the Mission Control Center in Houston. I remember going into Mission Control, the sound, the smell, the stale pizza and the old cookies and the burnt coffee. Uh, you can pick up the hum of the room very shortly. We're going to launch this mission. We were driven down to the Saturn V. We were the only people, except for a couple nervous people, that were near the vehicle. It had on board around five million pounds of high explosives. And of course, there's an old, old joke about how does it feel to sit on top of a vehicle that was uh, built by the lowest bidder. This is Apollo Saturn launch control, T minus 16 minutes and counting. I had decided that there was about a one third chance that the flight would be totally successful. Then I thought there was a one third chance that we wouldn't make it back. The mission was more important than anybody. It was more important than our lives, than our families. That's what we were there for. We were killed more times in simulation than you can shake a stick at. T minus 90 seconds and counting. It was very, very cold. We sat in there and shivered and froze. 50 seconds and counting. We have the power transfer. We're now on the flight batteries within the launch vehicle. 45 seconds. You could see up a little bit. We were flat on our backs. And I recall that circling over the uh, spacecraft were a couple of seagulls. And I've often wondered what happened to those seagulls. They must have been the most surprised birds in the world when that thing lit off. He minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. 10, 9, we have ignition sequence start. The engines are on. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. We have connected. We have connected. We have Sideways shaking was unbelievable. The vibration was so intense you couldn't see the instrument panel. We're clear to I thought we'd had it uh, during the launch. I was hoping that Frank Borman didn't have his hand on the abort controller. He, he said he took his hand off and he'd rather die than make a false abort. One minute after liftoff, the Saturn V is already supersonic. Well, the Saturn V is still the most powerful machine that man has ever devised. 20 tons of fuel a second, seven and a half million pounds of thrust. I think we were all surprised at how strong that thing was. <laughs> it had had two or three iffy missions before ours, but it was a piece of cake. It just worked beautifully. Unbelievable. Five engines in the first stage blast the Saturn V to seven times the speed of sound. The second stage cut in. Big bang. At 40 miles high, it's still accelerating. When you staged, you were throwing forward in the belts and then backward in the belts. And I thought I was being catapulted through the instrument panel. And the thrust looks good. All engines, all sources show the stage is burning perfectly. The third stage fires twice. First, the boost into orbit. The second burn takes the crew of Apollo 8 
where no men have ever been, deep space. There was no way that the Earth's gravity could hold us back any longer. So we were on our way. <laughs> 